Shout out to Loot Gaming for sponsoring this update. Loot Gaming is a monthly subscription box filled with all sorts of pop culture collectibles and gear. This month, they got stuff from Soul Calibur 2, Silent Hill, Psychonauts, and Cuphead. Subscribe now by going to lootcrate.com slash no, enter code no to save 30% off your subscription. Welcome to The No, I'm Brian. Sony says it has fixed that nasty viral message bug that has been causing PlayStation 4s to crash. People started noticing over the weekend that they were getting weird messages that were screwing with their consoles, in some cases requiring a factory reset. Well, in a tweet, the Ask PlayStation UK account told one user, we've since fixed the issue and it wasn't bricking consoles, just sending them into a crash loop that can quickly be fixed in under five minutes. And they again recommended that users delete any suspicious messages using the PS Mobile app and then reboot the console in safe mode, although some have been saying that didn't work. So I don't know. Aside from that, Sony hasn't made an official statement about the exploit. It's probably best at this point, keep your message setting to friends only, or honestly, better yet, nobody. Nobody's gonna ask you for money like friends did. Rockstar has denied reports that they overworked employees in the buildup to Red Dead Redemption 2. Over the weekend, studio co-founder Dan Hauser gave an interview to Vulture where he mentioned working 100-hour weeks. That led to a bit of an uproar online and more discussions of crunch culture in the industry. Well, in a statement to Kotaku, Rockstar walked those claims back, saying that the 100-hour weeks were limited to just a group of four employees on the senior writing team, which included Hauser himself. And they said it lasted three weeks, not years. They added that we obviously don't expect anyone else to work this way. So there you go. Speaking of Red Dead Redemption 2, we know that it's out October 26th, which is just 10 days away. Now we know when reviews will be up. The review aggregator site Metacritic tweeted that reviews will start being posted the morning before the release. So that's Thursday, October 25th at 6.01 Central Time. Now, if you're curious, the first Red Dead Redemption got a 95 on Metacritic. So it's gonna be interesting to see if the second game can match that impressive score. My guess, I'm gonna guess like a 97, 98. We're, we're hearing good things. The first round of DLC for Marvel's Spider-Man is out next Tuesday, and we've got a sneak peek at three new spider suits that come with it. In a post on the official PlayStation blog, the game's director, Ryan Smith, says that the first chapter of the City That Never Sleeps DLC is out on October 23rd. You will play, of course, as Spider-Man, and Smith wrote that a robbery at an art museum entangles Spider-Man and MJ with an old flame from Peter Parker's past, Felicia Hardy, AKA the Black Cat, of course. The best part is the new suits that are gonna come with it. They will include the resilient suit by famed Marvel illustrator, Gabrielle De Otto. We also will see Spider-Man suit from Scarlet Spider 2 and the Spider UK suit from the Spider-Verse. I love all these suits. The DLC, it's $10 on its own, or you can get all three chapters for 25 bucks. Reviews for the space combat game Starlink Battle for Atlas are out. The game, in which you're a part of a group of interstellar pilots, got a 76 on both Metacritic and Open Critic, so mm, it's one of those toys to life games where you can buy toys that serve as ship components in the game. And if you get the Switch version, there is Star Fox content. Games Radar called it a fantastic space exploration game with solid flights, fights, and enemies, but can be a complicated toys to life proposition to recommend and understand. GameSpot called it an interesting and enjoyable open world game, one that fully understands the appeal of exploring new planets and dogfightings in the cold depths of space. But they also added, it's just a shame that if you're interested in the physical models, you'll have to spend more to get the same experience as the digital version. It is out now for Switch, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. Speaking of upcoming games, we got an official single player trailer for Battlefield 5, and if you are into snow, you will love this trailer. It shows off their War Stories mini campaigns that we saw in Battlefield 1, those are coming back, and the trailer shows off a bunch of different uh, sort of scenes in the game. The resistance to the German occupation in Norway, as well as an English soldier behind enemy lines. There's also tank battles in the desert as we join the crew of a Tiger 1 tank as they question why they fight. There's all kinds of landscapes. Uh, there's snowy mountains, deserts, oceans. There's a sweet scene with a ship. Oh, lots of lots and lots of skiing. It's pretty epic. Hopefully the game can live up to it. Battlefield 5 releases next month, November 20th on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. 
All right, little entertainment news for you guys. Warner Brothers is digging deep into their vaults and making new movies based on some of their most long-lived and popular animated characters. Both Tom and Jerry and Scooby-Doo are in productions. Tom and Jerry is being developed as a live action slash animated film like Garfield, and the studio is talking to Tim Story to direct. He did the first couple of Fantastic Four flicks in the aughts. Scooby-Doo will be a straight animated movie, and the studio is pulling in Chris Columbus to produce. No relation. Columbus, of course, launched the Harry Potter series for Warner Brothers. No timetable has been set for these movies yet. Turning to Warner Brothers DC Slate, we've got some news on the Flash movie, and the news is pretty much that we will have to, we'll have to have some patience. While DC announced the Flash movie well before Justice League came out, Deadline is now reporting that the film will not even shoot until the end of 2019 at the very earliest, which means probably a 2021 release date is in the cards. 2021 just sounds so far off in the future. Is that just me? I know it's just like a few years away now, but like 2021, I'm like, oh, are we going to see that in our flying fucking cars? It just seems like Blade Runner. Anyway, back to The Flash. For a superhero that's so quick on his feet, the dude is sure taking his sweet time coming to the big screen. The word is that Warner Brothers is getting their own way here because star Ezra Miller is booked to film the third Fantastic Beasts films in the middle of 2019 and won't be available until the end of the year. No director announced yet, although both Phil Lord and Chris Miller, as well as Seth Graham Smith, who wrote the script, were attached at various points in development. So. We will see. All right, that is all the news we've got for today. Let us know what you think about these stories in the comments below. For all your news from every corner of the internet, like this video, subscribe to The Know. Better yet, hit us up on our website, theno.tv. Shout out to Loot Gaming for sponsoring this update. If you've never tried Loot Gaming, it's a monthly subscription box filled with all sorts of pop culture collectibles and gear delivered right to your door. They have sold more than 30 million crates and they've got 16 other awesome crates to choose from, including some legendary video game franchises like Fallout and Halo. There is a guaranteed t-shirt inside each crate and you get $60 worth of value for less than $29 a month. This month's crate is super cool. It's got stuff from Soul Calibur 2, Silent Hill, Psychonauts, and Cuphead. But this one will sell out and you've got to order this week to guarantee your order, so better get on it quick. Subscribe now by going to lootcrate.com slash no. Enter code no to save 30% off your subscription.